And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Magic Maze on Mars. Magic Maze is a game that came out a couple years ago. It was a cooperative speed game in which you controlled four different fantasy characters that were stuck in a mall, and they were all trying to shop with different items and then get out of the mall. But the thing about the game was, despite the silly theme, I could only move characters left, you could only move them right, etc. This is a sequel to that of sorts, except now it's on Mars, and you are trying to get resources to different spots to get colonists off the planet. It's actually a much less silly theme. That doesn't mean the game is less silly. Did I mention you can't talk? Here's how it plays. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to be given a tile in front of them. These are the colors that you are. And these tiles will change. So this tile will be given out in a five-player game. This one's given out in a four- or a six-player game. So in a four-player game, one player is going to be yellow and orange. Another person will be brown and orange, blue and purple, green and blue. So everyone has their own color that no one else has. But then two players share a color. But that's going to change based on the number of players. You're going to start with one tile face up. And then you're going to pick one of the five missions to go through. Uh, it, in the mission one, you can talk, but that's really not the point of the game. So for mission two and onwards, you cannot talk. So you're going to start by flipping this timer over, and no, at that point, players cannot communicate. Players are going to be simultaneously working together to finish a mission. And a mission is finished when you find a tile that has a dome on it. You get the resources there. This needs two orange and a green resource to put that dome on the tile. Once all the domes are filled up, then these colonists are going to land in a spaceship and you have to move them to that tile. Now, how do you go about doing this? Well, like I said, there's one tile starting up and players are playing simultaneously. There are many spots on the board. Here's one that produ produce resources. This will produce a blue resource. So either of the blue players can put a blue resource on here. They then move it to that station that it's connected to. It's connected here to the yellow station. Um, so either player could do that. These two players could not. You can now move the resource from station to station. However, there can only be one resource at a station. So if this station, for example, had a resource already at it, I couldn't move this until I moved this away. When you move resources, this can move on the brown path or the yellow path, but only the player who has those paths can move them. So perhaps the brown player moves it here, and then the player with green moves it up here. When you have a piece that matches the color of this half of a station here, the person who is that color, one of the blue players, could discard that to draw the top tile from the pile. This is how you do exploring. And then you look for the arrow station on here, connect it, and look, now we can produce yellow goods, or at least this player. This player might put a yellow here, and then the purple player moves it here, the green player moves it here, the orange player moves it here, the yellow player moves it here. We then get rid of that, and the yellow player will turn over this tile. And look, now we can produce brown tiles. And eventually, maybe we can produce, oh, here's where you build the dome. And then later on, here's a spot that if you get a resource there, you can take it off to flip the timer. Now, whenever you flip the timer, you use up one of your timer markers here to put on it to show you can only use it once per game. And when you flip the timer, everybody can talk briefly until someone takes an action. Now, you might be saying, so what's the point of this again? Remember, you got to build these domes. Once they have the resource there they need, you build the dome there. Once all domes are built, you put these guys on the rocket pad, and you got to move them to the dome, and then you win. But what do you do when Johnny McStupidson doesn't do the move you want him to do? That's what this token's for. You calmly and gently slam this in front of that person, telling them that they need to do something. You also have a token here, a, a thing here. I can put this here. Someone needs to produce a resource. Someone needs to do the time, and so on. There's different things that can be done here. And as the game goes by, as you play different modules, you'll have things like this, where there's no highway here, but someone can use a resource to build one of whatever color they might want to put there to use. You will eventually run into one-way roads. You'll run into sp spots that create trash tokens, which don't do anything. They just get in the way. And eventually, you'll run into places that produce slugs, and slugs can go around and eat the resource tokens and or trash tokens. 
And then there's a whole bunch of tiles that you can add in that don't do anything in particular. You can just add these in to make the game harder the more you add in. And you also have these tokens that you can use to maybe say something or to change one color of a resource to another resource. And in fact, you need to do that to beat some of the missions. And that's pretty much it. That's how you play. You will cooperatively win if you accomplish the goal. But if the timer runs out at any point, then you all lose. The game comes with a nice plastic insert that holds everything very easily. These tokens themselves are pretty cool. One of the things that you might not notice is that the different colors here of the highways also have slightly different looks to them. So if you're colorblind, it's easier to tell them apart. And even the resources themselves are not only a color, but they're also a shape of the different kinds of resources. This pawn's gonna get banged around a lot, so it's pretty good that it's nice and big. The timer seems to be fine. It's you know, a typical timer. And I really like the look and layout of the tiles themselves. I'm pretty happy with the components for this game. Magic Maze on Mars is a chaotically crazy game and I love it because there's so much mm, in your head because you need Joan to move it on the purple line and then you need Bob to move it on the red line and so you put the token in front of Joan and Joan's looking around the board she doesn't see what's obvious that you know is obvious and suddenly it's the tokens in front of you and how could that possibly be it's not your turn to move anything and yet everyone's looking at you and they're not trying to you know you're not supposed to like mm. Mm -hmm. You can't do any of that, and it is hilarious, but it is fun. You are working together. There's a solitaire mode in here you can play by yourself, but you are trying to do things. Now, the game scales pretty well. Uh, the idea that you have multiple colors to move, and some people can move the same color is useful. I might not see the blue track, but you do, and you are also blue, and you move it along. I'm fine with that. And the modules get progressively harder. And as time goes by, you're going to be sitting there trying to work together to figure out the modules. It is just a neat, fast, fun, back and forth game. And the fact that you can't communicate actually makes it funny. I mean, I, I won't say you can't communicate, you can't talk. Placing the pawn in front of people and putting the pawn on that board definitely are forms of communication. And the game gets trickier and trickier once you add that trash in and the resources. You need to move stuff out of the way to move other things in and that timer speeds by at the speed of light. It's tough. Now, some of you may have played Magic Maze, and you say, well, do I need to own both? Well, they are very similar games. I like this one vastly superior to the first one, and here's why. I like the theme better. I think it's easier to follow the paths, the different color paths, and to see right, left, up, down. Uh, I, and I also think the paths being different colors allows there to be some nice splitting back and forth. I also, the other one, each character had special abilities, and you could do them. Here you don't have to remember that. There are tunnels you can pop across or space slugs, but there's less. I want to say the original one had, I think, 17 missions. This one has five, which may feel like you're getting less content, but these missions can be played over and over and over again. And the fifth con mission here is pretty difficult. And so I, I like that. It's essentially one game with just different levels of difficulty. And I think the, even though the box cover looks silly, this one has a little bit more of a serious flair to it. I don't have to explain to people that we're a group of fantasy people burglarizing a mall. Here, we are working together to build these domes and move people. It is fun. Every game is going to be different because of the way the tiles come out, the way you explore things. There's no set solution to solve anything. And there's going to be a lot of that frustration. Now, some people hate this game. Don't get me wrong. It's not for everybody. But it is one that I find to be incredibly enjoyable. I love the idea of us all working together as fast as we can to overcome odds. And our only communication is slamming a pawn in front of somebody else. This game will make you laugh. This game will stress you out. But it's really quick. And I think a lot of people are going to like it. That's Magic Maze on Mars. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.